what started me on this tree planting journey was the interception of water, both on the surface and underneath. Um, just drying the landscape out a bit, we did have some bad salt problems. We still have the salt, but um, nowhere near as bad, and we've had two wet summers on top of that, and things just seem to be a lot better. I can definitely drive around the landscape with less chance of getting bogged, even with these last wet summers and what we did when we first came here in the drought. If we had a bit of rain, you have to be so careful. It uh, wasn't much fun at times. Whole of Paddock Rehabilitation provides a suite of benefits for farmers. It reintroduces shade and shelter for stock, critical for increasing lamb survival, puts trees back in the landscape to combat salinity, and enables pastures to rejuvenate. The paddock that we chose is in some of our higher country and when, the, when you get into the middle of winter and the winds are howling across there and you get a bit of rain, it is so cold up there. Uh, I've spent many a day there just thinking this is one of the coldest paddocks on earth. But that's the beauty of it, the fact that they are wind breaks within the paddocks. So you might have four rows of, of trees growing and then you might have 150 metres, you might have 100 metres, you might have five, 50 metres between the wind breaks as well. So you've, got, you've still got access to the paddock. Stock is easy, I mean it's easy enough to muster stock in here one thing or another still. It's not as if the paddock is completely turned over as you just suggested to a forest, it's not. You've just got trees sown in here which are going to increase productivity plus bring back wildlife into a stage that the, the paddock becomes a, a useful sort of an enterprise again. Bugger all. <laughs> Nothing. And that's the beauty of it. I mean that's the beauty of the whole of the paddock rehabilitation, the fact there was no fencing. We had a paddock here that 70 odd acres that needed to, to uh, have something done, done to it. The alternative would have been to fence around the perimeter on the, on the western side, and possibly the north and south. But you've then got the higher exposed areas where you, you can't, we couldn't sow the trees because you're still getting the sheep getting access unless we did specific little areas for fencing, which is a pain in the neck as far as I'm concerned. So the idea of doing the whole paddock fits in perfectly with what we want to do here. Direct drilling is just more efficient, I think. You get so much more done in, in one day. It takes weeks to do a small area. Well, for me as a one-man band or with the wife as well. Uh, it takes weeks to do a small area with tube stocks. With, with the um, direct drilling, it's just once the fences are up, it's in and out, as you know, in, in a very short period of time. And the results here for four-year-old trees, once they strike, they go. Uh, it is a cost to lock the country up, but with that funding that we got from Greening Australia to, to make up for the, the loss of production, it, it didn't cover the whole loss of production, but it made, you know, it went a long way towards it, and we're happy to put a bit in you know, financially to make sure that it's a success too, because we get a, a big advantage out of it. Whole of Paddock Rehabilitation usually restores areas of 20 hectares or more at a time. Within two years, ground cover is restored. And after five years, when the trees and shrubs are big enough, stock can be reintroduced. We've got 1,400 hectares here, and we lease another 1,000 hectares over near Bynalong. So it's all, uh, the sheep are mainly for wool, and then we do join some to Dorsets for, um, for land production. It's all completely regenerated back again now. Yeah, it's um, really good cover of clover and, and microlina. Microlina. And yeah. All sorts of other native grasses as well have all yeah. come back. The lambing percentage bringing for, coming forward with the 20 years has gone from, say, 120%, from relatively unexposed, uh, sorry, exposed paddocks to uh, unexposed paddocks. Now, with the windbreaks, we're getting upwards of an average for our 20 years of 140%, which is having a fantastic impact, A, on the bottom line, and B, on the fact that genetically, I think our, our flock is becoming a fairly fertile flock, and consequently, it's, uh, it's uh, making it worthwhile as far as in justifying putting the wind breaks in and continuing to. You, you, you'd rung me up and you said, oh, I can see the sheep are eating the wattle pods that have fallen off the wattle trees. Um, and so I, I, I was still at the university then, and was able to, to look up on the, on the internet that um, 
these, the wattle pods are actually very high in tannins and, and they act like a natural drench when the sheep eat them. Yeah. So I think what we saw then with, with, with 20 sheep dying on one side just in pasture but only one sheep over here was that they were actually self-medicating yeah. on the wattle pods. Yeah. I um, put some twinning lambs, uh, twinning ewes in here, sorry. I scanned to lamb twins and we put them in here for lambing. And um, there was a hundred ewes in here. It's a 40 acre paddock. And as you can see, they've left plenty of feed in here and haven't knocked the trees around at all, which was a plus. Luckily it rained and it's, the results are here, which is quite extraordinary, I think. It's, it's been locked up now completely for two years. Oh, not, not quite two years, October this year, two years. And the response is, I think it's fantastic, the number of trees are staggering, absolutely brilliant. But uh, yeah, I think the, um, the results are, are brilliant. I don't doubt that it's adding value to the place as, a, as, a, as an asset. Uh, the trees, apart from aesthetically they look pretty bloody good, but I think probably just from the value aspect, the bank thinks it looks good, so <laughs> they're all happy. <laughs> it's done its job. A good sheltered lamb, lambing paddock. If you would like help fixing your landscape, get in touch with Greening Australia. We can help fix your landscape too. Hill, I think because they're natives and they just know how to do the job here in Australia.